In a small village in India, elephants and humans had always lived amicably together, but when a female elephant began to behave strangely, the locals realized that she was depressed and even cried as if seeking help, and they decided to follow her to the wilderness, but they soon found it so shocking that many were as upset and frightened as elephants. In the small village of Nimitong in India, locals are used to seeing elephants. The village was built deep in elephant territory, so it was expected that they would encounter these huge and beautiful beasts from time to time. Elephants are so common there that villagers barely blink as one of them clumsily crosses the road or grazes by a tree near their home. They are as common as cats and dogs in western countries. The people tried to leave the elephants alone, and they knew that the village was on their territory, so they tried not to get in the way of the elephants who had been there long before the arrival of the humans, and the elephants seemed satisfied with the arrangement and would tolerate the presence of the people. Realistically, they have no choice, but elephants are intelligent, emotionally complex animals, so they know what's best for them. But one day, the residents saw a very strange sight. A female elephant stood in the middle of the road leading to the village, making a loud noise and waving her nose as if trying to get their attention. When people try to pass, she slaps them and steps on the ground with her big feet in frustration. The villagers had never seen anything like this before, so it certainly aroused their interest. When people began to approach, they noticed something strange, something that filled their hearts with emotion. The elephant had tears in her eyes, and the wet marks on her face showed that she had been crying for a long time. She was obviously in some kind of emotional distress. But no one knew why they didn't know how they could help or what they could do. Fortunately, the elephant took over after a small group of people gathered. She waved her nose as if inviting people to follow it. She set out to the wilderness and looked back every few minutes to see if people were still following her. Thankfully, they were so interested in what had upset the poor elephant that they could not carry on with their day. If they can help them in some way, then they will repay the elephants and let them live in their villages. The elephant took them to a clearing with a large well to keep the land watered. It usually has a hatch, but it's gone. The elephant went over and stood by the well and looked down at it. What the villagers saw shocked them, almost as disturbed as a mother elephant. In the hole deep underground was a baby elephant, obviously a larger baby elephant. I fell into the water and was trapped. Fortunately, the water was as Harlow and the elephant could keep his nose out of the water so that he could breathe, but without the help of human beings, he would definitely die there. The villagers reacted quickly. Some people ran back to the village to alert the animal rescue team, and soon experts came to the scene with machinery and manpower to try to help rescue the frightened baby elephant. The team quickly determined that they needed an excavator to dig down and create a passage through which the baby elephant could escape. But there is one problem. A big storm is coming, and it brings extremely heavy rain. If the rain is as big and persistent as forecasters think, it will cause flash floods that will not only hamper their rescue efforts, but also raise the water level in the well even if it only raises by a few feet and 50 centimeters, and the elephant will struggle to breathe and eventually drown. People can't allow them to start work as soon as possible because they can dig by hand with the most basic tools. Before the excavator appeared, I started to act, but the progress was slow. When a car with an excavator appeared, they kept hearing thunder rumbling in the distance, while the mother elephant paced nervously back and forth, watching progress and staring at her baby elephant as the team worked. The veterinarian studied the baby elephant at the bottom of the well, and she saw several wounds and abrasions on it because it fell down and was afraid that they would be infected. She was able to pour sanitizer on the wound, and although it undoubtedly stung the baby elephant, it still waved its nose to thank the treatment. Fortunately, the injury was not more serious, and it might have ended more tragically if the baby elephant had landed in the wrong way, as the excavator dug several bricks from the top of the well and started to loosen, as they fell into the well because of the vibration, but the clever and wily baby elephant kept moving its body to avoid any secondary injury. The workmen did their best to remove any excess loose bricks, and they would no doubt be painful if they fell on the calf. Suddenly the sky opened, the rain stopped, 
and the rescuers dug and dug, but the dry earth on the ground began to turn to mud and stick to their shoes and the tracks of excavators. If the machine stops working, the game is over, but fortunately, it keeps going. The rescue is not over yet. After an hour's digging, they finally opened a passage to the bottom of the well. All that remains to be done is to smash the brick wall at the bottom of the well and let the baby elephant walk freely. The excavator retreated to the car, and rescuers jumped into the car and began to beat the wall, chiseling away bricks and stone bit by bit. It took a lot of effort, but the big cracks in the wall finally began to show that the mother elephant suddenly felt that her baby was about to be released. She walked down the bank and tried to help push her body against W and then suddenly, with a loud noise, the wall fell down, revealing her baby. The baby elephant is free at last, but it is not out of trouble yet. Its mother has been able to climb the slippery embankment relatively easily, but its calves are struggling out of the newly dug dirt passage. Heavy rain and mud made it trickier, and his feet slid around. It will take the combined efforts of five strong rescuers to help propel him upwards and back to flat ground. The baby elephant ran straight to its mother. A mother can rest her child with her nose, and making a loud noise to celebrate her happiness was obvious the veterinarian examined it more carefully and gave it some medicine which would help any pain and pain baby elephant except this and although it was only a little rocking and scratching in good conditions the rescuers cheered and celebrated as they watched the mother and son turn around and walk slowly through the rain and the wilderness. But before they left completely the mother turned around and looked into everyone's eyes as if thanking them and if it hadn't rained she would have seen the tears in their eyes. Tears of happiness and relief and they had saved the calves life and they or more importantly the mother would never forget that and from time to time the mother and her baby would come to the village and just stand there and watch the world go by and they were no threat to human beings and seemed to enjoy being with people and no one could be sure they believed the mother and her children were there to express their gratitude and gratitude to the people of the village of Nimitin for what they had done that day and how they had saved the calf's life. The woman and the elephant get along very well, but one day the woman slapped the elephant. Do you think the elephant will attack the woman? Totally wrong. Fumai is a wild elephant, just like other Thai elephants, it was born in the tropical rainforest, surrounded by all kinds of wild animals, but Fumai's situation is worrying. Considered an endangered species in Thailand since 1986, elephants have a high status in the country, respected and loved by many, but they are not safe. The number of elephants in Thailand has been greatly reduced, and the biggest culprit for this sad fact over the years is logging, where some local businesses cut down huge numbers of trees for profit. While derivatives of wood may benefit people around the world, this practice has come at the expense of animal lives, with the destruction of Thailand's rainforest causing a dramatic loss of habitat. So the elephants had to struggle to survive, and that's why Fumai was rescued by a woman named Lake Chart. Over the decades, Chart has made a name for herself in helping wild elephants. Chart founded the Save the Elephants Thailand Foundation, which owns a sanctuary called Elephant Nature Park in Chiang Mai, Thailand. At present, there are more than 70 wild elephants living in this reserve, and they are well cared for and protected by professionals. To talk about the encounter between Chart and Fumai, we have to start with an outdoor adventure many years ago. At that time, Chart came to a forest and accidentally found a dying and very thin baby elephant, which was the Fumai. It was just born at that time, unfortunately, its mother passed away not long after giving birth to it, and the poor Fumai had to live with the elephant herd. Fortunately, the other elephants in the elephant herd took good care of it. During that time, although Fumai lost his biological mother, he was cared for by other elephants. To some extent, it can be regarded as making up for part of the lack of maternal love in his heart. However, the good times did not last long. Due to human activities, the habitat where Fumai was located was severely damaged. The ever-decreasing space and lack of food made life difficult for Fumai and other elephants in the herd. Under such circumstances something heart-wrenching ensues. The elephant herd began to fight among themselves due to the food problem. Some elephants even did not hesitate to hurt their companions in order to survive. 
the young Fumai could not take good care of themselves. In the case of elephants with a lot of meat and little meat, adult elephants will naturally leave food for their children, and poor Fumai often cannot eat enough, and even take a meal for several days, although Fumai can feel that he is receiving less and less love, what can he do when he is lonely? It can only bear all this silently. Due to the lack of adequate nutrition, the growing Fumai was getting thinner and thinner. When Chart saw it for the first time, Chart couldn't believe her eyes. She had never seen an elephant so thin. At this point, it is not an exaggeration to describe it as skinny. Chart knew that if the Fumai was not saved, it might not survive three months. She immediately called her team, and after a brief explanation of the situation, the team immediately sent someone to the scene. They carried Fumai into the car and took it to the elephant nature park. Chart called the veterinarian, who immediately examined the elephant and made a health assessment after learning of the elephant's condition. They found that the situation of Fumai was worse than expected. Fumai's body is too weak. Due to prolonged hunger, it suffers from severe malnutrition, which will not only affect its physical development, but may even endanger its life. In addition, there are large and small wounds on Fumai's body. It may have been attacked by other animals. Although it survived, due to its very slow healing ability, these wounds did not recover well. Some have even started to become red, swollen, and inflamed. As an elephant rescuer, Chart is very distressed by this fact. She cannot imagine what this young elephant has gone through. What she has to do is to save the life of the baby elephant and let it pass. Have a good time. Several professional veterinarians operated on Fumai, infused it with antibiotics and nutrient solution, and cleaned up its body and wounds. With the full rescue efforts of the medical staff, Fumai managed to save his life. However, the subsequent treatment is more difficult, and Fumai has to survive postoperative infection and sepsis. At the same time, due to the lack of various nutrients in Fumai's body, it also causes its body to recover more slowly, which is a big challenge for elephants and medical staff. In order to help Fumai get through the difficulties, Chart decided to take care of it herself. She said in an interview, cubs like Fumai's age need the care of their mothers the most. What they need is maternal love and learning from their mothers. As a real elephant, although Fumai lost his mother unfortunately, I will give him as much love and care as possible, and I think I can become its human mother. In the following days, as Chart said, she completely regarded Fumai as her own child. Considering the weakness of Fumai's body, Chart prepared nutritious and digestible food for it every day. At first, Fumai would show resistance when facing strange human beings. Carefully, Chart noticed the emotional changes of Fumai. She could fully understand Fumai's behavior. In order to make Fumai feel at ease, she spent more time by its side, although this process is very difficult, but Chart can feel that the distance between herself and the Dharma is getting closer little by little, which makes her very gratified. During a long period of getting along, Fumai gradually accepted Chart. For a lonely baby elephant, the existence of Chart made him feel an unprecedented preference. It began to rely on Chart and liked it. Follow Chart's side, and sometimes make a little joke with Chart. Chart also found that Fumai became more and more cheerful and lively, and even took the initiative to make friends with other elephants in the reserve, which is a very good phenomenon. Years later, under Chart's careful care, Fumai became a strong and lively elephant, and it became a popular man in the reserve. Many people came to visit it, and the reserve became a practical experience site of the local school, many students come to visit and have a wonderful trip with the elephants. Whenever students come to visit, Chart always greets them personally and tells them many stories about elephants. However, during one visit, Chart accidentally slapped it while introducing the Fumai, and this surprised the students present, they were worried that the elephant would attack Chart, but Fumai continued to stay quietly beside Chart as if nothing had happened, which made the students very puzzled. Seeing the puzzled faces of the students, Chart explained with a smile that when Fumai was young, she would gently pat its body with a towel or cloth every night. In the sleep of elephants. So that's how it is. 
the students suddenly realized that the elephant had such a cute side. They stepped forward and gently stroked the femai. Perhaps it was because of this kind of warmth that the Dharma veins became what they are today. Chart stood quietly aside, and she smiled with satisfaction. At this moment, she felt the flow of love between humans and animals, which is what she has been pursuing all her life. When a baby elephant lay down and wouldn't wake up, its mother became worried that something was wrong. But it's what the mother did next that will truly shock you and leave you speechless. This incredible tale took place in the Prague Zoo, the capital of the small Central European country of the Czech Republic. There was an elephant enclosure in the zoo containing several large Indian elephants. The enclosure itself was large and expensive, providing plenty of room for the elephants to roam around and enjoy themselves. Two of the animals in the enclosure were a large female named Janita and her male partner, Makan. The two of them had taken a liking to each other from their first meeting, and it wasn't long before Janita became pregnant. The zoo staff were overjoyed that they were going to welcome a baby elephant to their facility. The pregnancy would last two whole years, but that time flew by. Soon enough, Janita gave birth to a male calf named Max. Some people called Max the Miracle Elephant because he was the first of his species to be conceived and born in the Czech Republic. The zoo had accumulated eight elephants since it opened, but none of them had ever given birth until now. This was a big step in their efforts to conserve the Indian elephant population, not only to help them survive but also to thrive. Max's birth meant that the herd felt happy and safe inside the zoo, and the environment reminded the elephants of their native land. Unfortunately, their natural habitat is being destroyed at an increasing rate. Without the help of zoos such as the one in Prague, elephants would likely become extinct. Max was adorable and a hit with not only the zookeepers but also the visitors. The cute little elephant would run around after his mother, playing in the watering hole and rolling in the mud. It was as if Max was more like a dog than an elephant. He would often approach the glass that separated the visitors from the animals and playfully tap his little trunk on it, much to everyone's delight. Like all children, Max was curious and playful. He not only liked to run around and expend his youthful elephant energy but also enjoyed exploring and discovering new things. From the moment he woke up in the morning to the second before he fell asleep, Max was constantly on the go. And that was just fine with the zookeepers because they were sure he was fit and healthy. This adorable addition to the family kept the visitors happy. Elephants are usually calm and relaxed creatures, so being able to see a youngling roam free and play all day was the highlight of many people's visits. Both children and adults would cheer him on every time he picked up a new skill or discovered something exciting inside his enclosure. Parents would feel a familiar tug at their heartstrings whenever he went searching for his mother at the end of the day. Max was just like a human baby, just bigger and with four legs. His days were somewhat similar, but he always managed to find something new and exciting to do. But one day, something very out of the ordinary happened. It was mid-afternoon, and Max had been playing like any other day while Janita kept an eye on him. Suddenly, he walked over to a shaded area and lay down on the ground as if he was exhausted. At first, no one thought anything of it, believing it to be part of his play. But after a while, the motionless infant started to raise a few eyebrows. And of course, no one was more concerned than Janita. She slowly walked over to Max to check on him, all the while with a nervous look in her eyes. She was a very protective mother, and because this was her first child, she was extra cautious about her son. The longer Max remained on the ground, the more concerned people became. The usually chatty crowd of visitors looking at the elephants fell silent, waiting to see if Max would get back up. But he remained lying there, completely still. They watched as Janita nudged him with her trunk and foot, as if trying to rouse him. The worry only grew worse when Max started twitching on the floor. Janita started to circle around her son, trying to figure out if something was wrong with him. It was clear that the mother elephant wanted to help her baby, but there seemed to be nothing she could do. All she could do was continue stroking and nudging him with her trunk, trying to get him up. But all her efforts seemed in vain, 
as Max was completely unresponsive. Strangely, none of the other elephants in the enclosure seemed as worried as poor Janita. Even Makong, Max's father, remained at a distance and didn't seem to want to get involved in all the fuss. They all just stood there, watching from a distance. No one approached to help or see what the issue was. They simply waited and patiently observed the mother elephant's reaction. The zookeepers found this behavior very strange since elephants would usually help each other out and be protective if one was in distress, as Janita clearly was. The rest of the herd would usually swoop in and try to help in any way they could. But this time, they remained calm and relaxed, supporting Janita. Janita returned to nudging her child to get him to stand up, but nothing seemed to work. She pushed him harder and more aggressively, and Max would only twitch and then go back to lying still. The zookeepers had all sorts of thoughts running through their heads. Perhaps Max had become dehydrated after playing for hours under the sun and had collapsed. Maybe he had hurt himself and could no longer walk, or maybe he was weakened by some kind of illness. They just didn't know. But what happened next left everyone stunned, with their mouths hanging open in shock. Janita turned away from her son and looked toward the crowd of people, where several zookeepers were also watching with great concern. She raised her trunk and started to wave it, as if trying to get the attention of one of the staff members. Perhaps they would be able to come and help poor Max. Everyone couldn't believe what they were seeing, but the zookeepers wasted no time in answering her plea for assistance. They quickly entered the large elephant enclosure. Many of the other elephants remained at a safe distance, and even Janita backed off as the staff approached Max, who was still twitching on the floor. She watched with pleading eyes, hoping they would be able to help. Things were not looking up for her son. The zookeepers tried pushing Max to make him stir and maybe get up, but it didn't work. They tried pushing harder to see if it made a difference and could elicit a response. But it seemed like their efforts were in vain. Just as things started to look their darkest, a huge smile broke out on the zookeepers' faces. They let out a sigh of relief as Max stood up and ran around, playing as if nothing had just happened. It appeared that the little elephant just needed a power nap, and he had quickly fallen into a very deep slumber. He couldn't be roused, not even by his mother. It was only the efforts of the staff that jolted him awake. Suddenly, the lack of interest from the rest of the herd became clear. The other elephants had seen through Max's strange behavior and had supported Janita by remaining calm and relaxed. The young mother was over the moon and lovingly caressed her son with her trunk. Before the staff left, she waved her trunk at them in thanks. While it was only a harmless reason that Max had lain there, she was still grateful for their help. The wailing female wolf suddenly approached a man, but later he realized that she was in big trouble. This story takes place along the Koo River, on Cooper North Island in the southeast of Alaska. A man went out alone to find gold. He met with an amazing thing. For this man, the beginning of this day is like any other day. When he walks along the stream, he comes out of the forest and will only freeze on the track. There was a huge Alaska wolf not more than 20 steps away from him, but the man immediately noticed that the wolf was in trouble. One of its legs was caught in an old trap set by his recently deceased friend. He knew that if the wolf was left in the trap, it would die there. The man cautiously approached the wolf who was trying to retreat, but the man noticed other things. The wolf was a female with milk on her teeth, which meant that she had recently given birth to a baby, and there was a nest of hungry babies waiting for their mother somewhere nearby. From the appearance of the wolf, the man guessed that she had been trapped for several days and knew that the pups would need feeding soon if they could survive. The man couldn't let their mother escape to find them. He decided to look for the wolf pups in the nearby woods. He began to look for any clues that might lead him to the wolf mother's nest. Fortunately, there were still some pieces of snow on the ground. A few minutes later, the man found a faint trail full of insects. This trail led him through the forest, climbed the rocky slope, and finally climbed the slope. She found the cave, at the bottom of a huge spruce tree. The four wolf pups began to come out of the nest carefully. 
The man carefully examined them and guessed that they were several weeks old at most. One by one, he put them in a burlap bag, and then returned to the slope. When he entered the empty space where the mother wolf haunted, she immediately found the man, stood up straight, leaned forward as far as possible about one centimeter, and she screamed all over, as if she knew what was in the bag and wanted to reunite with her children. When the man released the cubs, they all ran to their mother and began to drink milk from her teeth. The man looked at them and was glad that they could be reunited with their family. When the mother wolf distracted to feed her cubs, the man tried to approach them, but the female wolf's eyes immediately shot at him, and she began to growl menacingly. The man didn't know how to help the trapped animal next. With children to protect, she became belligerent, and every time the man tried to get close to her, he would show his tusks. The man considered his choice and came to the conclusion that, like her children, the wolf mother might also be hungry. If she is trapped, she can't go hunting. The man decided that he had to help her find something to eat, not only to help her, but also to hope that she would start trusting him. He walked towards the stream and found a dead deer with only one leg sticking out from the snow. He cut off a quarter of the back of the deer and returned to the mother wolf. When he entered the open space again, the mother wolf's attention was obviously focused on the man, as if she knew what he had brought to her. The man cut the meat into pieces and threw the large piece of venison in the direction of the wolf. She smelled it and then wolfed it down. When all the food was finished, the man built a simple place for himself and soon fell asleep. At dawn, he was awakened by four furry fur belts. They sniffed his face and hands. He glanced at the restless wolf mother and began to think of a plan to help her. If he can win the trust of animals, then he can finally save her. In the next few days, the explorers divided their time into two parts and used it between exploration and winning the trust of the wolves. He talked gently with her, threw her more venison and played with her pups. Gradually, he kept getting closer to the adult wolf. However, he was careful to keep outside the length of the chain. The big animal never removed her black eyes from him. But as time passed, she seemed more and more calm in front of him. In the evening of the fifth day, the man brought daily venison to the mother wolf. Suddenly, the wolf pups jumped at him. Although the man won the trust of the young wolf pups, he began to lose hope of helping the mother wolf. Then suddenly, the man felt that he saw her tail swinging slightly. He decided to take risks and enter the length of the chain. The female wolf did not move. After reaching within eight feet, the man sat down carefully at a place 2.4 meters away from her. He was too close to her, and her huge jaw might break his arm or neck with a flick. Determined to help the mother wolf, the man wrapped his blanket around him and slowly slept on the cold ground. It took him a long time to fall asleep, but at last he fell asleep. The explorer woke up at dawn and was awakened by the sound of the puppies breastfeeding. He gently leaned over and pushed them, which made the mother wolf stiff, but she did not do anything else. The man took this as a good sign. He gently put his hand on the injured leg of the animal. Now he is closer. He can see that the trap only catches the two toes of the female wolf, which means that she should be very good if he can open the trap. The man quickly found the release spring and opened the trap. As soon as she was free, the wolf mother jumped out of the trap and began to wander around. She was used to moving again. When she was released, the wolf mother approached the man carefully, smelled him, and she gently licked him, then turned around, and then limped into the forest with her wolf pups. Before disappearing completely, she turned to look for the prospector, as if she wanted him to follow her. The man understood, and slowly followed the small family a few miles behind them. They climbed the Kopanov mountain until they reached the alpine meadow. There is a wolf group lurking around the forest. The man counted nine adult wolves. From their funny play actions, there are four approaching adults. After a few minutes of greeting, the wolves suddenly howled, which was a strange sound, from a low sob to a high roar. That night, the man set up a camp on the edge of the grass. When he lit a fire, he could see many wolves hiding in and out. However, 
He was not afraid because he knew that animals were just curious about him. The next day, the man knew that he should go. He packed up the camp. The mother wolf watched him do this. When the man walked to the other side of the grass, he looked back. The mother wolf and her cub sat where he left and looked at him. The mother wolf then gave out a long howl, and then disappeared into the forest with her wolves. Four years later, the man returned to the brook, which was the autumn of 1945. After the horror of war, it was good to return to the towering spruce bushes, breathing the fresh air of the familiar Alaska bushes, and walking along the brook. The man met the trap that he had rescued the mother wolf. It was in the place he left many years ago. Seeing it gave the explorer a strange feeling. This strange feeling made him want to climb these mountains and go to the grassland where he saw wolves for the last time. When he reached the grass, the man made a long, deep wolf howl. Surprisingly, the echo came back from afar, and then in the distance, he saw a dark shadow moving slowly in his direction. When it crossed the grass, he could see that it was a rolling wolf. He immediately recognized the familiar shape, even after four years. The wolf slowly approached, his ears pricked up and his body tightened, and stopped a few yards away. Her thick tail began to swing slightly, and then, after a while, as if she had never been there, the mother wolf left. The man smiled because of the amazing thing that had just happened. Before turning around and leaving the grass, the man never saw the animal again, but the memory she left was always with him.